Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be interviewing Debbie the Cockroach herself from Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Masters baby, Brooke Thies. I met Brooke uh, last year at Sinister Creature Con in Stockton, California, and she is one of the classiest ladies I have ever met in my life. I mean, she is a national treasure, and um, I can't wait to, uh, t- to interview her. It's been a long time coming. Uh, she's a very busy lady, but um, she's going to be taking the time out right now to uh, talk to me and stuff, and I'm pretty fucking excited. It's going to be pretty cool. And um, here is my interview with the lovely, the beautiful, the classy, Brooke Thies. Hey, Brooke. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? Ouch. Yeah, I was I was away when uh, that happened, and then I saw it, and then I just sent you the message really quickly. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I guess I just thought you wanted to call you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I can't believe it's been a year already since uh, me and my mother met you at Sister Creature Con in Stockton. In Stockton, yeah. Stockton, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a good Yeah, but unfortunately, they decided not to do it there again, so they're going to remain at the Scottish Rite Center in Sacramento uh, for future t- the two cons they do a year. Oh, wow. Did they not like their venue there? I, I imagine so, because... Uh, you yeah, know, they have the Stockton Comic Con there every year, which I went to um, this past time, then never again. Oh, my God, it was just crowded. And they just, yeah, they just, um, I guess uh, the, the the arena just, I guess, charged uh, more money than um, the, the Scottish Rite Center does, you know, for tickets and stuff. So I guess they're not going to do it. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I guess you're not so close to it anymore, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. What you gonna do? Yeah. So, did you know um, at an early age that uh, you wanted to act? I did. I, I, my mother was a model uh, in New York City, and I would look at all her, they call it tear sheets. So models have these, they tear out the sheets of the magazines they've been in, and they put them in a book, and that's like, you know, your your resume when you go on call, on go seats, I guess they were called, um, for modeling. And so I just, yeah, I wanted, like, I don't know, probably from six or seven, I kept telling her I wanted to be a commercial. She just kept thinking I was, you know, wanting to emulate her. I didn't really want to do it. And by the time I was 11, I just never stopped asking her to get me an agent. And so finally she did when I was 11. <laughs> wow. Mom knows best. Yeah. <laughs> right? I know. I know. It's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you started doing plays. You started doing plays in school. Yeah. So in high school, I did some plays, but really, I didn't do a lot of stuff in high school. I did. I, I was just kind of quietly doing it professionally. Mm-hmm. So you know, I didn't talk about it a lot, but I went on all my commercial auditions, and I, I just had a commercial agent through high school, and then at the very and I think junior, senior year, I got a theatrical agent and started going up for, you know, parts and stuff. But I was kind of, I kept it on the DL, I kept it on the down low, I didn't talk about it a lot. And I did a couple plays in high school, but for some odd reason, I didn't really fit in with the thespians there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of quietly did it, you know, professionally. Wow, and I was reading that uh, you have dyslexia. Uh, a good student because it was very frustrating. 
studies, but uh, it, the only thing that helps me with is I would not want to be on the page, so I would memorize everything, like, in a heartbeat. I had everybody's lines memorized, because I was like, I can't, I was so nervous to have to read it off the page and not, you know, reverse letters or numbers and, and stumble, and so, I was, you know, I just did that to save myself humiliation. <laughs> Yeah, my mom has it too, and um, yeah. she uh, she's the worst speller I've ever seen in my life. Like, she'll send me a text, and I'll want to be a teacher and correct it. <laughs> I know, right? Well, my best friend still corrects me to this day. They got the spell check, like, the right thing, but uh, it's bad when you're third grader, or I guess she's now in fourth grade. I'll sometimes ask her how to spell things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a good... Oh you did a good job signing my autograph, though. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, they get, I get a little nervous sometimes when people bring or just say, hey, say, can you say this one? And I'm like, oh, gosh, i got to write it down because I don't want to refer <laughs> to numbers and letters or whatever. And so I don't want to ruin it, especially people's private, you know, personal stuff they bring. If it's a headshot of mine, I can just give another one. But I'm like, okay, I really got to hunker down and focus. Make sure I have everything right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be stressing. Yeah, yeah sometimes it's stressful. And it's so slow when I'm working with people, personal items. Yeah. So your, your first movie was Lil Nikita. Yeah, my first movie was Lil Nikita with River Phoenix, Sidney Poitier, and um, Richard Benjamin was the director. No, it's quite a little... Uh, project to get cast on. I played, you know, I, they cut my part, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I played River Phoenix's buddy's girlfriend, and mm -hmm. we were in a couple of group scenes together, like at the gas station, and at some movie theater, and but like outdoor movie theater, and then, but they cut everything. That I, you see me in a long shot, like at some gas station where I'm hanging out in the car or something, and you see me in that scene. Yeah. But that's about it. And uh, I remember when I went to go to, you know, the, got invited to the premiere and, like, you know, a couple scenes came and went where I knew they were. And I leaned over to my mom. I said, I think they cut all my stuff. She's like, ah. Oh. And I had brought my grandmother. You hear my grandmother yell from, like, the third scene, did they cut our scene? Oh, <laughs> I can't tell you how often I've heard that story, though, about going to the premiere and their scene was cut. Oh, right. I know. Well, you don't move the story along. You know, I have no idea of that now. I, you know, obviously, as they go along in this crazy industry, I realize that, you know, lots of things get cut. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just hope, yeah, like, you know, I would have just liked to have had the reel of my stuff so I could put it on. But uh, today, that's a probably a lot easier to get. Back then, it was possible. <laughs> yeah, was was that intimidating though to be um, on a set with those giants? Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Was, yeah, that was pretty cool. My mother was probably more excited than I was because she was like, "Boy, Richard Benjamin," you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was was River fucked up yet or was he focused? No, he wasn't all. He was just a nice kid. Quite, you know, normal. I only worked with him two or three days. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, he wasn't there yet at all. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not happened later on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then... Comes the uh, role you'll probably always be known for, Debbie the Cockroach, in yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street for the Dream Master, baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Playing the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. I know. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Again, it's something I auditioned for. It's not lucky to get. It's not lucky to get that awesome death scene and work with uh, Crazy Man George. And that whole crew and go down and 
<laughs> did, did, were you a fan of the series? Yeah, I was I was like four or five years old. I started watching the series way younger than I should have, and yeah, I, yeah, I was just terrified of them. <laughs> Those tentacles weigh a ton. <laughs> I wonder if there's any I wonder if there's any behind the scenes stills of that Yeah, I, re- I remember um, uh, when we were at the panel uh, you guys did, um, I remember you waved at me, and yeah. I was um, I, I saw the panel again on YouTube later, and I posted it on Facebook, and I said, uh, Brooke Thies waves at me with her hand, not her tentacle. <laughs> ah, that's so freaking funny. <laughs> <laughs> were you... S- yeah, that was a pretty good one. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. They had a lot of people up there, so it was good. A lot of good stories. Like, new stories came out of that film. Yeah. Were, were you satisfied with your death in the movie? Say that again? Were you satisfied with your death in the movie? Yeah. You 
Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, though. I would have loved a little bit more cockroach goo. <laughs> uh, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I'll tell you, I couldn't I I couldn't eat sausage pizza for years after seeing that scene, that one scene. Right? Yeah. That was really bad. So nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Very nasty. Well what, what what was the cast like working with? Yeah, I've had Tuesday on the show. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I've had Tuesday on the show twice. Her and I uh, get along very well because we're both perverts. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've had Brooke Bundy on the show. She's such a lovely lady. Wow. Yeah, I started, I studied under her for years. For years, when I was about 15, so five, about five years, I took classes for her. I've her for almost my whole life. It's kind of crazy. Wow, yeah. I've, it's really creepy. And I had never met somebody else with my name, so it was so cool that her name was broken. I always remember everybody was Yeah. I I've also interviewed her daughter Tiffany. She's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've agreed that that's a daughter. Yeah, she was in uh, Friday the thirteenth, part five, new beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I finally met Robert this summer. Yeah. Oh, he's a sweet man, and has great stories about stuff he's done. Yeah. <laughs> he certainly is. He really is, yeah. We always, whenever we do our conventions, we're all together. We're like, we always ask Robert to go to dinner with us. We hope he goes because he's like, you know, center and have attention, but it's just so fun to go to dinner with him. Mm hmm. It really, really is. How did you get the role of uh, Wendy on Just the Ten of Us? Right. And so did Jamie Luger. Different, different episode. Yeah. And they did a pilot presentation to the network. The network said we want you to come up with an 830 show with us with a coach. And so they did it with a coach and a different, not different house, they did it with a different lady. And then, so they did, I don't know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever the uh, presentation was. And then after that, they showed a clip of me and it was Yeah. But then, 
Mm -hmm. They wanted to meet they wanted to meet girls. Um and they couldn't find anybody. They had found one set of triplets and, and two of them they had they were under contract to Disney. So they finally came around back to Jamie and I and said, you know, I think these are the girls that we want. So we had we had both gone in and auditioned for the producers in reading the parts of Wendy and but then they didn't take us to network, so they I found out a lot of interesting things. So a lot of times when producers want particular actors, they mm -hmm. will they may take three people to network. They'll take two people that aren't really that great and that they don't really want. So they kind of manipulate it, I which I never knew. And so they had taken a couple of people for both JD Luger and I's part that they didn't really want. So they must not have been very strong. And then at the end, again, they showed the tape of our, um, you know, uh, scene from Story Pain. So they said, you know, these are, you know, these are the other, these are the other girls that were thinking of for the part. And then, of course, they cast us. Uh -huh. So I didn't, have to, I didn't have to go to network, and I remember I showed up. You know, usually you see everybody at network that you could potentially be working with. Mm hmm Yeah, it's so crazy how you and Heather and Joanne got to be on the series after being in Nightmare movies. <laughs> sad what happened to her earlier this year. I heard you. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. And I reached out to Bill Kirkenbauer for an interview, and 
he told me, you know, he's pretty much retired and he doesn't want to do podcast interviews anymore, which is a shame because the podcast interviews I have heard him do like years ago, it's all about his comedy. I want to ask him about the show and about some movies he did, you know? So uh, when I met you last year, uh, uh, my mom was telling you about uh, how she grew up with Dennis Haysbert and everything. Oh, yeah. I actually just reconnected with him this year. Really cool. Well, he's got that D4 trivia thing, and my mom actually won it this summer. Oh, no way. Are you serious? Yep. She's, she won all free, free clothes and stuff. Yep. <laughs> oh, see, that's, so, that's so funny. Yep, she, she was so happy about it. She was posting stuff about it every day. She was so happy. That's, that's nuts. <laughs> that's, that's so funny that that would, you know, that it would all come so simple like that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That's really, really cool. Yep. Hey, is it true that you did the the voice of of the cartoon version of Maxie the Doll? Yes, I didn't do the voice. I had a huge contract with um, with uh, Hasbro. Uh, I did all the commercials. Um, I did the voice of Yeah. Oh, that's good. I, I assume, uh, unlike the doll, you actually have a belly button. Yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, any? Are you an any or an Audi? A Tuesday question. <laughs> well, if you look at the commercials, you'll see that I'm an idiot. <laughs> really? I have an Audi. <laughs> so, uh, but between acting and being a mom, what other uh, work do you do? Oh, nice. Right. So, um, my husband actually got very hurt on film as a therapy is the one thing that saved him from, you know, becoming a drug addict because he was just, he, he just did some serious damage to his leg and it took him about five years to recoup. Oh. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, I, I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. When I hit the new phase of my grandma. When I have to do the Penn's commercials, I'm going back. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Depends. Maybe I can book a few of these, you know. It's funny. <laughs> Do you have any? Do you have any upcoming um, roles or uh, or conventions to plug? Yeah, I was like, what the what the fuck is with that? <laughs> just wrong i i wish i could uh put on a screening or something but you know i i'm, I'm not rich or nothing <laughs> You should take her to uh, Son of Monster Palooza this weekend. Yeah, where is that? In Burbank. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know anything, so. 
yeah, we'll see what happens in the future and stuff. Maybe they'll do a 31st anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I think the, the Wow, that would be great. Yeah, that would be cool. Huh? And all the actors have said yes, so I think uh, they're just waiting on Robert before they start shopping it. So uh, I, just, I have to screen it. I have to script it my phone. I have to read it. So uh, I'll get back to you. Yeah, so that would be really fun. And then we really fun. He might, he might look at it and go, nah, get Jackie Earl Haley. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody, nobody can play Robert. No. Nobody. You know, Robert is ready. He made that role. Yeah, he's the the, the greatest and stuff. Well, yeah, he did. I have to cut you off in about five minutes. I just want to let you know I have to get out for work. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so okay, so you so you don't have anything to plug then. I didn't have what. You don't have anything to plug. Uh, for no, projects I'm not, or nothing. I'm not, I'm not really active. Awesome, awesome. That would be great and stuff. Yeah. Well, well, Brooke, you are a dream and a delight. And I, I hope I was a gentleman, even though I asked that one question. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. And I'll see you again in the future somehow. Absolutely. Yep, say la, say la vie, and have a great day, Brooke. All right, Tommy. Nice to talk to you. Thanks again for the interview. I appreciate it. My pleasure, and don't work too hard. Oh, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> You're an actor. You know, I tried to pick the uh, job, but I did the least work and make the most money. <laughs> well, at least you don't have to change your name like Kelly Maroney did when she was a massage therapist. <laughs> Oh. Uh, that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a great day. Well, there you have it. Brooke Thies. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Brooke. You are awesome. You are sweet. You're funny. You're delightful. Everything. I can't tell you. Hello? Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, Tommy. See you later. See you later. Well, there you have it. Brooke Thies. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Brooke. You are delightful, sweet, funny, classy, all of the above. And I just love talking to you. And I hope they invite you to more conventions and screenings in the future. That is fucked up that they don't. You are a gold mine. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past.
Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Layer, dudes.